That's a fun story. I was presenting at the Las Vegas conference um, and I I was doing uh, several sessions focused on climate change and the environment and how planners can uh, learn to uh, not only adapt and mitigate for climate change. And the research director at the time um, saw me and suggested that I consider uh, serving on a task force uh, for the exam committee. And I, I said, sure, I didn't really know what national leadership involved or what committees involved and um, since then I've never looked back. So I served on a task force, then a committee on the exam committee and then uh, the position for uh, on the AICP commission for my region uh, was up for uh, election, was open for election. So I applied and the rest is history. So two, two terms representing Region 5 on the AICP Commission, and then I'm now uh, in um, my, my term as AICP President. It has been such a meaningful experience to me to be a leader in APA and to um, you know, the camaraderie of, of all the other planners and you can come to an APA conference and just really geek out on planning and, and talk to people who care about the same issues that you do and that share your values. And learning from planners from all over the country, I never would have met planners from South Carolina and learned about their challenges, um, planners from Texas and planners from Colorado and so on. And uh, to me, it's just, it's very professional rewarding and also personally rewarding. I've met so many lovely people that I know I'll be friends with uh, long, long beyond my tenure in a APA leadership. I did my undergrad in uh, economics and always thought I would go on the, you know, MBA path. Well, I did start uh, going to school for my MBA and was just, just didn't speak to me. I wasn't satisfied. I felt that um, I, I wanted to be in a more people-focused, community-focused profession. And at the time, my brother and his roommate were both getting their master's in urban planning from University of Illinois at Chicago. And in sitting down and talking with them, I realized that that could be a field for me and um, decided to apply to planning school and got in, uh, wanted to get back to the Northwest where I had done my undergrad. And uh, again, I mean, the rest is history. I've never looked back. I've always felt that it's, it's the perfect profession for me because it does uh, involve um, sort of, uh, data and, uh, uh, visuals that you get with, uh, you learn uh, with uh, economics degree, but then really talking about how we can um, improve our communities and looking towards the future. And so um, that's kind of my journey. I encourage all my students to go for their AICP. And the reason is that it really sets you apart from other people working in the planning field. Because planning is a generalist field for the most part. And you learn how to be a convener. You learn, how, you learn critical thinking skills. You learn communication skills. And what sets you apart from other professions is your AICP certification. And that means that you um, adhere to our uh, set of ethics, that you uh, will be following uh, continuing education, you will keeping yourself up to date in the planning field. 
And again, I think it really sets you apart as you're applying for other jobs or you're working with a community. It gives you that kind of seal of approval. The planning profession has to be very forward looking. We have to look at what changes we can make today that may not actually be evident or be seen for years to come. And I think that sometimes that's a really hard sell for a community. And that continues to challenge planners, especially elected officials who are frequently looking toward the next election cycle. And the planners are looking way into the future. So a challenge for planners is, I believe, how to emphasize the importance of the future and the understanding that changes we make today will benefit future generations and how to make sure that those voices are in the room even though they may not even be living in the community um, today. I wish I knew that results would take a long time to see because, you know, we tend to be a very results-orientated culture. But, you know, you change a zoning law, you change your land use policies, and it could be years be before you see the implication of that. And that really being in planning requires a lot of patience. And I, and I kind of wish coming right out of school, you know, it's good now I can look back on that but that um, just because the results are into the future, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do what's right today and that you need to have patience because this, it's a process. It's, planning is very, very much a process, not only in getting um, new laws and policies adopted, but also in seeing the results of those laws and policies, this long term. As a profession, as um, professionals, we're conveners. We bring people together. We look at a community holistically. We're not just looking at building by building or even block by block, but we're looking at a community holistically. Not just the built environment, but the people who live there as well. And trying to identify what are the components that make a whole community that uh, enable people to live healthy, fruitful lives that enable them to spend time with their families instead of commuting, that enable them to be, uh, you know, close to nature, even if it's just a pocket park. But the value of planning is understanding that a community and the people in the community are complex and that you need to bring a lot of people and different expertise together in order to, uh, uh, to advance the values and ideals of the community. I'm very much an outdoors person and in the winter you'll find me cross country skiing. In the summer, you'll find me hiking, and then year-round, you'll find me in a pool or in a lake, depending on the, on the, uh, on the temperature of the water. Um, but yeah, I, I love my, my year-round activity is, is swimming. And um, so uh, I'm a proud member of the US Masters Swimming Association. But also, yeah, I, I like to be active and um, I'm very passionate about planning. I'm a planning nerd. You can ask my, my kids. You can ask my friends. Um, I am very motivated to look at our communities as opportunities. I'm constantly um, criticizing one decision or another made in the community because sometimes um, the, to me, what would seem to be the easy choice is not the easy choice because of all the um, players involved. But what keeps me going is passion of our younger generation and 
their understanding of the power of planning um, to create um, more equitable communities, to protect our environment, and so on. And um, I, I just love the fact that every day I can get up and I can, um, you know, uh, focus on planning either um, as a, a teacher, as a mentor now, um, and as a leader in APA. Thank you.